In this video, you're going to learn how to handle service design clients that demand guarantees. I'm here with Chris though, and if you have no clue what we're doing, make sure to check out the first video in this playlist that should explain it all. We're helping you to sell service design with more confidence. And the way we're doing this is by talking about the challenges, the sales challenges you guys and girls gave us. And this is a really classic one. And we're going to repeat the process that we did in the previous videos. We're just going to role play the shit out of this. Chris, you're going to be the creative, the service designer. Once again, I'm going to be the client, the construction business client. Um, are mm -hmm. you ready, ready to jump in? Yes, I'm ready. Now I've got your proposal laying here on the table. Um, we sort of uh, agreed on the whole process and we're sort of discussing the final details. Now I shoot this remark at you. Chris, this is awesome. Uh, we've been talking about this for a month. I think it's uh, really the moment to get going. Just one question, you know, when, when do you think we'll start seeing results and uh, when when will we see um like a positive roi or maybe even i i'm, I'm still I, i'm trying to explain to the rest of the team what we'll have at the end but even for me it's it's really hard to grasp can you help me out a little bit well the the process is evolving mark and we will kind of figure it out as we go along with you and I'm sure you're going to be very happy with the results. Hmm. Yeah, I, I trust you. You know, man, you're you're the man, Chris. You know, you know, I believe in you. But I, I sort of need to to also sell it to the other people. And, and what will I say when the uh, chief financial officer comes to me and says, "You know, you you've invested like 50k in this. When will we start seeing results?" I need to have an answer. Can, can you help me out a bit? Well, the result is it's, go it's going to be a lot better than it used to be. Mm, yeah. And you're going to have really happy customers. Those mm. are the results that you want, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and it's going to feel yeah. really good and premium and we're mm. going to build great customer satisfaction. Yeah, that, uh, I, that's what we want. The, the, here's the thing. Yeah, he just sent the CFO just sent me an Excel sheet last last week. Then he wanted me to fill in. And I, I was just the, I, I couldn't make the numbers work, you know. What kind of numbers would work then? Yeah, like how how many customers will we get out of this? Uh, when will we see results? Um, those kind of you know those kind of well CFOs. There, there are a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot of things out of our control, right? Like how how can I guarantee those things? Mm. I don't know if I can. So attempt number two. Uh, this was a good attempt, Chris. I know you did your best, but I know you can do better. So let's let's take it <laughs> let's take it from the start and let's see okay. where we, where we end up here. So again, right. Chris, like I told you, man, I'm super excited to start this and uh, really want to uh, get on with this project. There's just only one thing, and that is um, the CFO just emailed me last week asking about when we'll see a positive return on investment on this project, and I was like with numbers and stuff like that, and and also my team members were asking like. You know, Mark, can you tell us what we'll have at the end? What will be the outcome of the, the project? And that's also a little bit vague for me still. I, I believe you. I know something good will come out, but, you know, can you help me give some answers? Yes. First, I do want to acknowledge that it is a big investment on your part. So let's make sure that we don't spend money foolishly. We've agreed to do discovery, which is the research part, and it's going to inform a lot of the decisions we're making. But what are the metrics for success that your CFO is concerned about. When you want to measure ROI, what's going to make her happy? Uh, you know, everybody's talking about better customer, customer satisfaction, customer experience. That's the words they're using. And they are, yeah, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty vague from their side as well. Yeah, so let's make it less vague. Hmm. Is there a benchmark that we can set or a baseline in terms of what the customer satisfaction is today? Do you have a measure of that already? That's a challenging thing. We don't. We actually don't have a measure. So I know what you're going to say. You're probably going to say, "Well, how can we improve then?" You know, and yeah, yeah. 
Well, maybe there's other ways that we can mm. measure. So it's important that we have an objective, qualitative and quantitative baseline so we can see percentage of improvement. But just pretend for a minute, if we could measure what was what's important to, to the company today, yeah, what percentage yeah. of improvement would you consider to be successful? <clears throat> I don't know. 10% okay. in, in this specific situation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, 10% is the challenge, but it is something I think we should set as a benchmark and work hard towards achieving that. Hmm. <clears throat> so that's, that's helpful. Okay. Hmm. And anything and, else? And, yeah. The, the other question about like, th th they're just nagging me. The team is nagging me about like, Mark, what, what will the end results be of this project? And, and I keep telling them we, we have to discover, but I, 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 can, can you help me to grasp this a little bit? What will the outcome be? Can you? Yes, I, I can answer that. Oh yeah, but before awesome. we move, yeah, before we move on, I just want to make sure that you and I and all parties interested that are going to be impacted by the decisions we're making today have a clear understanding of what the goal and intention is. I mm. would not feel good to start this project with you unclear of what those objectives are. Yeah, and especially during the discovery phase, we'll have to define that together. Hmm. Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah, I, I totally, I totally get that. Yeah. Okay. So now the question of what is it that you're going to get? Yeah. Right. Okay. What is it that you want to get from this? <laughs> um, we, you know, we want innovation. We just want uh, ideas and solutions that will take our services to the to the next level. That we want more. Yeah, happier customers. Yeah, that's that's what we want. And good ideas, good ideas to make our customers happy. Okay, how will you measure an idea that's good versus an idea that's not good? Hmm. Well, I guess an idea that the customers get excited about, that we get excited about, and that's new. That's that's that hasn't been done before. I see. Okay. So you're giving me a lot of abstract things to work with, Mark. So mm. perhaps we can evaluate ideas that are good from not good on uh, X, Y dimension. Maybe ideas that have a big impact on revenue, on customer satisfaction are, are weighted higher that are less costly to implement. So for mm. example, if you could buy every customer or, or upgrade all their, their fixtures for free, they'd be very happy with the home, right? But right, we can't right. afford to do that because that's not repeatable. Uh, and it's, it is remarkable, but it's not repeatable. So perhaps mm. during the design of the ideas, we can be free form in, in what kind of ideas we generate, but then we have to then measure them against impact and expense. Does that sound like it would Makes be helpful sense. to you? Yeah. Yeah. That would definitely Good. be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a lot of design thinking or strategic thinking. And the result of that would be a summary document that we're going to give mm -hmm. to you that highlight mm -hmm. different ideas and that we're going to score and prioritize the ones that are are most likely the things that we want to implement immediately. And we'll, we'll mm. form a plan on how to achieve that. And then from that point, a you plan. can hire yeah. whoever you need. Yeah, you're going to need a plan. Yeah, it's your blueprint. You yeah, understand they, that a plan. Yeah, yeah, a roadmap, a plan. That's that's what we get. We yeah, we have we have roadmaps for other stuff. So yeah, they mm -hmm. they will get that. Yes, let's unpack what just happened. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, this okay. this is so Chris. This is so common in the service design field because we deal. We don't deliver. Uh, we we have a lot of tangible stuff in our work. But that's not the end result. That's, that's just a means right. to an end, right? We clients don't buy a website, they don't buy an app, they don't buy a visual identity. They they buy change, they buy buy innovation, and you always run into this challenge where a client is like, yeah, it's 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 too abstract. So how did you how did what's your approach, and what was the difference between okay. the first one and the second one? The first one was really difficult for me because I'm being asked to produce something that I yet don't 
fully understand and I'm squirming around. I'm being very insecure and I'm also somewhat defensive about what's going on. And I'm not really uh, tuning into the emotional or what what needs are, are being expressed to me from you. Now, when we hear mm. this issue of the CFO and the ROI on the second take, I needed to get definition from you. Rather than dodge it and make up weird answers, I, I asked you what metrics are important. <laughs> and you said customer satisfaction. I thought other things, you were going to bring up other things, but you only gave me one thing to work with. And so then mm, each time mm. you give me a new piece of information, I need to keep asking more questions to get clarity. The clarity is on part in part mm. for me, but it's more important that you feel that you're getting clear. Because thinking is difficult. Making decisions is difficult. My job is to help you think through the mm. problem and to express the intent of what it is that you want. So, so what is the thing that you see most creatives get stuck at in this, with in these kind of situations? I think they get stuck with trying to make up an explanation. They get stuck with trying to appear to be the expert or to be professional, mm. rather than mm. just focusing all their attention on the other person and understanding what their needs and wants are, and they're mm. communicated to us in loose and abstract language. So whenever you say something loose, you'll notice I'm trying to make it more concrete. So when you say customer right. satisfaction, you could have said, well, our Yelp reviews or our customer satisfaction surveys after construction is 3.5 and we want to get it to four. And right. I'm trying to pin you go, down. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we didn't go, go into ahead. depth on, on that kind of things. But if a client would say something like that, like we want to take it from a three and a half to a four, and they would say, can you guarantee me that your that the investment in this project will do that? What would you say? I can say, I can guarantee you, I will make the recommendations, but then it's up to you and your team to execute. Mm, right, right, right. I can give you the plan and, and you right. know, in construction, right. right? Right. I can give you a great blueprint, but when you build a house, if you cut corners, if yeah. you use sloppy contractors, right. you're not going to hold the architect accountable. Exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. All right. Again, the question to the viewers of the service design show, have you ever been in a similar situation? Now, don't lie to us. I know you've been in there. Leave a comment down below, letting us know uh, that we're not alone here. Next up is the grand finale in the series with Chris. He's going to share his most important sales tip and we wanted you to see it as well. So click this final video in the playlist in the series and Chris and I will see you over there.